Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we'll take up some problems from kinematics. So today's first question is CYU30. So the question states that we have, in order to cross a river whose width is 320 meters, a boatman steers his boat, always aiming towards a point that is directly opposite to the starting point. So let's draw a rough sketch first. Again, let's say this is the initial starting point A and this and this point B is a point that is directly opposite. So now it's given that the velocity of the boat relative to the river current is 2.5 meters per second and the river current velocity is 1.5 meter per second. Determine the time which the boat will take to cross the river. So we have to figure out the crossing time. The first most important thing is guys, the relative velocity vector, which is basically VBW, is always towards this point B. So so let's say this is the trajectory of the boat when the boat is at this x mark even here the relative velocity vector will be pointing towards b so this is the main concept here so the relative velocity vector is always aiming towards a fixed point okay and obviously there will be a river velocity added to this and that will dictate the final trajectory of the particle here also guys if we observe the motion relative to a different frame of reference then the then the solution becomes uh, pretty simple Okay, so we are going to do a frame transformation. So we are going to observe the uh, motion with the frame that is moving with the river velocity. Okay, which basically means that we'll bring the river to rest and then we'll observe the motion with respect to the river. Okay, so let's say the river was flowing towards the right uh, with a velocity of VW. So VW is given to be 1.5. So we'll just keep it as VW for now. If I bring the river to rest, then we have a problem here. The point B, which is the red point, will start moving towards the left with 1.5 meters per second. And even point A will start moving. But point A is not important to us uh, because the boat has already left point A, right? So it is some, the boat is going to now move in this region. So this particular bank is irrelevant to us now. So what happens to point A is not important. But yeah, even the starting point A will move towards the left. So now let's get rid of this particular bank over here. Okay, so initially the boat is at this particular point, guys, which is at a distance of B from the other end. And initially the boat is at rest. Okay, and the relative speed of the boat VB is given to be 2.5 meters per second. And in this frame, the boat B always points towards the point B. So when, okay, so after some time when the point B will be over here and let's say the boat is somewhere over here, the I of the boat or basically the velocity vector of the boat will be towards the point B. So basically we modified this particular problem into the famous catching problem, right? So that's the idea that we are trying to exploit. So after some time, let's say the point B reaches this particular point, okay? And obviously the boat must have covered some particular distance as well. So let's say meanwhile, this is the distance that the boat covered. So now this is where the boat is. Okay, so now let's connect the current point of the boat to the point B. And let's say this distance is equal to R. Again, the boat's velocity, which is 2.5 meters per second, is always towards the point B. And the point B itself is traveling to the left with 1.5 meters per second. Okay, so this end of the line is reducing at a rate of 2.5. And the other point is moving towards the left with 1.5 meters per second. So let's say R makes an angle of theta with the horizontal, which means this angle is also theta. Okay, so now we can say dr by dt, which is the rate at which the distance R is changing, uh, equal equals 1.5 cos theta. So this is the speed with which length is increasing minus 2.5 because 2.5 is reducing the length, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to send dt to the other side. So we have dr equals 1.5 cos theta dt minus 2.5 dt. So now we're going to integrate this expression. So initially at time t equal to zero, what is the value of r? The point b is over here and the boat was over here. So r is nothing but the distance between these two points and that was initially equal to b. So the initial value of r is going to be b. Uh, and finally, after after t time, the distance between the particles should become zero. So the LHS would become b, RHS is going to be 2.5t minus 1.5 times integral of cos theta dt from zero to t of catching. Again, we have no idea about this particular integral over here. And similar to the chase problem, we'll use the fact that finally, when the cat catches the mouse, their horizontal displacement from the initial position is same. So in a time of capital T, the horizontal displacement of the point B would be equal to 1.5 times capital T. And for the boat, we figured out that uh, if, it's, if its speed is 2.5, at any general time, it makes an angle theta with the horizontal. So the horizontal speed of the boat is 2.5 cos theta. So if I do integral of a horizontal speed dt, I should get the horizontal displacement of the boat and this would be equal to 1.5t and from and from here we can figure out this particular integral as 3 by 5 capital T. So and now we can substitute it into our integral over here. So after substituting the cos theta integral, you will uh, you can solve for the time and you'll get the answer as 200 seconds. So that was the answer to this question guys. So now let's move to the next question. 
Okay, so now let's discuss problem number 31. So we have two ships A and B that can establish mutual communication when they are not more than 50 kilometers apart. So whenever the distance between A and B is less than 50, they can communicate with each other. Now at midnight, the ship B moving towards the north with a velocity of four kilometer per hour. Okay, so let's just depict everything in a diagram as we read the problems. So let's say the ship B is over here. So it's given that it is moving in the north direction with a speed of four kmph. And it passes a location that is 80 kilometers east of ship A. So, so let's say the ship A is over here. So this distance is given to be 80 km. Now the ship A itself is moving with a velocity of 16 root two towards the northeast. So the ship A is moving in this direction with a speed of 16 root 2 and this angle is 45 degrees. So the horizontal and the vertical components are both 16 16 right okay so let's just break it down as 16 16 so now the question is what is the time interval during which they were in communication communication is established when the distance between them is less than 50 right so we have to figure out when is the separation between A and B less than 50. Now guys, uh, as we are only interested in the relative separation between A and B, we can fix one of the ships at one point and observe the other boat with respect to one of the boats. So let's say uh, we choose the ship at B as our reference, then we'll reverse and add the velocity of the ship B to ship A. So its vertical velocity is going to be now 12 km per hour. Okay, 16 minus 4 is 12. Okay, so now with respect to B, A has a vertical velocity of 12 and a horizontal velocity of 16. So the trajectory of A is going to be a straight line, a straight line, and it'll move in this direction. And this angle theta, we can easily determine. If you observe tan theta is three by four. So theta is nothing but 37 degrees. Okay, so now let's drop a perpendicular onto this line from the point B, and let's call this point as point C. So the distance BC is the minimum distance between both the ships, right? And that distance is nothing but 80 sine theta. So sine 37 is 3 by 5. If you do the calculations, it will 48 kilometers. So the distance BC is 48 kilometers, which means uh, when the ship is at point C, it can communicate with the ship B, right? So let's also determine the distance AC. So AC is going to be 80 cos theta, which is going to be 64 kilometers. Okay. So now the thing is, guys, uh, if this distance over here is 48, then there will be some point slightly far away from this point C, which is at a distance of 50 kilometer from the point B. And to the left of this particular point, the distance is going to be greater than 50. Okay, so let's say that particular point is over here. And similarly, on the other side, it is over here. Okay, let's call this point as point D and point E. So uh, when ship A reaches the point D and point E, its distance from the point B is going to be 50 kilometers. So these two lengths are 50. Okay, and this green length is 48. Okay, so now the basic concept is that when the ship is between D and E, both the ships can communicate. Okay, and when it is towards the left of D and towards the right of E, there won't be any communication. So now guys, observe this right triangle over here. So its hypotenuse is 50, perpendicular side is 48. So we can determine the length DC, which is also equal to CE as square root of 50 square minus 48 square. So this actually becomes equal to 14 kilometers. So these two distances are 14 each. Okay, now, now guys, the distance AC was equal to 64. So if you subtract 14 from it, we'll get the distance AD. So the distance AD is going to be 64 minus 14, which is 50 kilometers. So now let's find out the net relative speed of the ship A. So VAB, the magnitude of this is going to be square root of 12 square plus 16 square, which is actually 20 kilometers per hour. Okay, so the ship is traveling at a speed of 20. So what time will it take to cover 50 kilometers? So that time T1 is equal to 50 divided by 20, which is 2.5 hours. So basically from the start of the motion after 2.5 hours is passed, the ships can start to communicate. Okay, and uh, after reaching D, it can communicate for an additional time delta T, uh, which corresponds to this 28 kilometers. Okay, so let's try to figure out that delta T. So delta T would be equal to 28 kilometers divided by the speed 20. So this comes out to be 1.4 hours. So it, it takes 2.5 hours to reach D, then communication starts. Okay, and from D to E, it takes another 1.4 hours. So it's given that the motion starts at midnight, guys. So that is 12 a.m. And communication starts after two and a half hours. So which means uh, both the ships interact with each other starting at 2.30 a.m. Okay, and it communicates for a time of delta t, which, which is 1.4 hours. So 1.4 hour is nothing but 1.5 hours minus 0.1 hour, right? And one and a half hour would mean the time is 4 a.m. 
right? And if you subtract 0.1 hour, so this is actually six minutes. Six minutes before 4 a.m. is going to be 3.54. So this is the time period during which both the ships are going to communicate with each other. Okay, so this is the answer to this question. So yeah, that was the solution to this question. So now let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now let's talk about question 32. So we have an aircraft that is flying at a level height in a straight line. When you see it at an elevation of 53 degrees above the horizontal, you hear its sound coming from an elevation of 37 degrees above the horizontal, meaning the sound appears to come from behind the plane, right? So let's just draw a diagram to understand the situation. So let's say this is the ground and I'm depicting both the plane and the observer as point particles, okay? So the observer is over here at point A and let's say this white line is where the plane is flying. So it's currently at this particular position B and it is flying towards the right, okay? And its speed is actually not given. So let's just take it as V. Okay, and let's also call this particular height as H. So now it's given that when it is at an elevation of 53 degrees above the horizontal, so if you connect the point A to point B, this angle is, is given to be alpha. So now in this case, the sound appears to come from 50, 37 degrees, okay, which means uh, the sound appears to come from a point somewhere over here. Let's call this point as point C, such that the line connecting A to C uh, makes an angle of beta, which is 37 degrees. Now, when the aircraft passes a location vertically above your head, its angular velocity relative to you is given to be omega, okay? Basically, when the plane reaches above your head, it is at this particular point and its speed is v, which means the angular velocity of the plane relative to a is going to be v divided by h, right? So the omega that they have given us is nothing but v by h, which is equal to one by eight. So now the speed of sound in air is given as 330 meters per second. And it's given that the transit time of light from the aircraft to you is negligible as compared to that of the sound. Okay, I'll explain what this means. So the question is to find out the altitude of the aircraft. So we have to find out H. Let's just understand the problem guys. So so in this particular diagram, what we can see is the, the plane B is over here, which makes an angle of 53 degree with the horizontal, right? Now, why does a sound appear to come from this point C? And the, and the answer to that is pretty simple. Whenever sound or light is emitted from the plane guys, it, it takes some finite amount of time to reach the observer right? Because the sound has to travel through the medium to reach the observer at A. Only then the observer A can perceive the sound. It's exactly the same for light as well. But uh, the thing is, as the distances are very small, we can roughly consider that light almost travels instantaneously, which means if the real position of B is over here, then the observer will perceive it to be here only. Okay. Whereas if there was a time delay for light reaching the observer at A, then by the time light covers this distance, the the plane would have moved forward by some distance. Okay, so the real location of B would be over here at B dash and the observer will see the plane to be at B. Okay, so but in this question, we have to assume a light travels instantaneously to our observer's eyes. Okay, whereas that is not true for sound. Sound actually takes some finite amount of time to reach the observer's ears. If we, you know, run back time, point B was over here, right? Uh, it must have emitted some sound waves, right? And these sound waves will take some time to reach the observer's ears, okay? Let's say that time is T. So, and in this time T, the plane actually moved forward by a distance CB. That's the reason why we perceive the plane to be over here, but the sound appears to be coming from this direction because this is the direction in which the sound waves are traveling, okay? Okay, so now let's try to figure out the distance CB. So this big right triangle, guys, the perpendicular side is H and this angle over here is beta, right? So this particular length over here is going to be H divided by tan beta. Similarly, th this distance is going to be H upon tan alpha. Okay, so the, so the distance CB is pretty straightforward. It is H one upon tan beta minus one upon tan of alpha. So this we can also write it as H times cot beta minus cot alpha. So now the distance CA is nothing but H divided by sine of beta, right? So CA would be H cosecant beta. Now we'll use the fact that the time it takes for the plane to go from C to B is the same as the time it takes for sound to go from C to A. So to cover C, CB, the time taken would be CB divided by the speed of aircraft, which is V. And to cover CA, the time taken would be CA divided by speed of sound, which let's just say it is C. So now, uh, as you can see, we can just take the ratio of these two terms. So CB by CA is going to be cot beta minus cot alpha multiplied by sine of beta. And on right side, we have V by C and V again, guys, we can use this particular relation over here and say that V equals H divided by eight. So this is the value of H. 
that we are seeing. So now let's substitute all the values in. We'll get the answer for H as 924 meters. Okay, so the flight, so the plane is flying at a height of 924 meters. Okay, you can also find out the velocity with which it is moving. Mm, it'll be just 924 divided by 8. So that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.